What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony and today we are in the new 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe courtesy of Jack G. and Volvo Hyundai in York, PA. And so I am in this one today. You guys may already know I do own a Santa Fe. It has been rock solid for me so far. It's got around 22,000 miles, but a couple fun facts though. Santa Fe has been in production since 2001 and it is actually named after the city in New Mexico, Santa Fe. Santa Fe, New Mexico, of course. And so today we will be going over everything about this one. I'm going to start with the test drive. We're going to go over the exterior, interior, safety, all that stuff. And I'm shooting this all on my new camera shot in 4K. So I do hope you guys enjoy. If you guys want to see more new car reviews, feel free to hit the subscribe button. That, of course, is what this channel is all about. And what do you say? Let's go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so to start, trim levels have been adjusted ever so slightly for the 2020 Santa Fe. There are now three trim levels only. First one being the SE, starting at $26,995. SEL for $28,745. And lastly, the Limited, starting at $36,745. And by the way, that was pricing for the front-wheel drive variant. If you wanted to add all-wheel drive to any of those trim levels, simply add $1,700 to any of those prices. But when it comes to the power plant, there is one standard setup across the board, and then there is also going to be one optional setup for the SEL and limited trim levels. But so the standard power plant is going to come from a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 185 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 178 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 RPM. Again, sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic giving you MPG numbers 22 in the city, 29 highway for the front wheel drive, 21 city, 27 highway for the all wheel drive. But then there is the optional engine setup being a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder. This one puts out 235 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 260 pound feet of torque available at 1400 RPM. Front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic once again, giving you MPG numbers 20 in the city, 25 highway for the front wheel drive, 19 city, 24 highway for the all wheel drive. But so now having said all of that, I did want to mention before we do any kind of accelerations in the Santa Fe, there is a drive mode button directly behind the shifter that is going to give you three different drive mode options, including comfort, eco, and sport. Can tell you I did just put it in that sport driving mode. I figured we had a little hill here, might as well. It did immediately downshift shift for me. So it is going to adjust things like the shift points, the throttle response, and actually to my surprise, the steering sensitivity as well. So it does give it a little more heavier of a weight to it within in that sport driving mode. So I am definitely appreciative of that. The steering feel actually feels really good in that sport driving mode. Anywho, since I have now said all of that, let's go ahead and do a quick little acceleration test here in the Santa Fe. And let's see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Santa Fe here up to speed. Actually, not too bad. I don't think I've mentioned it yet. We do have the 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, so it's not like we even have the turbocharged engine, but it's not bad. You're definitely gonna have a little bit more fun with the turbocharged engine, but shouldn't have any issues with merging onto the highway or anything like that. But so then to go along with that, as always, braking is equally important. Why did the windshield, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, the windshield wipers just came on. There was a little sprinkle of rain, and of course we have rain sensing windshield wipers. I'll get more into that later, but braking feel is definitely fine. No issues with coming to a stop in the Santa Fe. And even in mine, I can tell you the braking feel is definitely on point. One of the best things about the Santa Fe. There's no spongy or squishy braking feel. Brings the Santa Fe to quite a quick stop there. But touching on suspension and handling a little bit, up front you're gonna find a McPherson strut front suspension with gas-filled dampers and a stabilizer bar. In the back, a multi-link rear suspension with gas-filled shock absorbers and a stabilizer bar once again. And like I had previously mentioned, when it comes to the steering feel, there actually is quite a noticeable difference between the driving modes. So for me, I would personally leave it in that sport driving mode, just simply alone for the steering feel because it is a much heavier weight to it. It just feels better to me. You might have a different opinion, but if you take it out of that sport driving mode, the steering feel is relaxed a bit more. So if that feels better for you, have at it. And as far as ride quality goes, definitely no issues there. The Santa Fe has been soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely so far. Then touching on cabin noise a little bit, very, very quiet ride. The only thing I have been hearing is the floor mats wrapped in plastic in the back a little bit, but other than that, it is an extremely quiet cabin, partly due in part because it does have an acoustic laminated front windshield, so that is going to absorb 
a lot of the sound coming from the exterior into the cabin so definitely quite nice when it comes to cabin noise and then touching on visibility here i can see perfectly fine out the back honestly definitely no issues there and in this size suv you're really not going to have any issues when it comes to visibility but but the santa fe doesn't stop there it goes one better with a head-up display so forward visibility is equally on point i'm looking at my speed right now as well as some safety information up there and it also displays the speed limit of any given road if you were actually on a road as i am not right now in a parking lot and again and also contributing to visibility is those rain sensing windshield wipers I've been mentioning. So cool thing about them, they may scare you at first if you're not used to them, but when it starts to drizzle even, the windshield wipers will automatically turn on so you don't ever have to worry about turning them on manually. That is kind of a cool thing. It's kind of like automatic headlights. It's something that I think should be standard on most vehicles out there. It's quite nice. And so, but anyways, that is about it for the driving portion of this review. Let's make our way into what's new now on the 2020 Santa Fe and then move on to the exterior, interior, and then go to safety. And so touching on what's new in the 2020 Santa Fe, the entry level SE actually loses a few safety features, including the blind spot monitoring system and rear cross traffic alert, both of which though are now standard on the SEL and limited. Sliding second row seat is also dropped for the SE trim level and SEL plus and alternate trims no longer exist, obviously, because I already went over the trim levels, but SE also gains a blind spot mirror, I guess, because of the loss of the blind spot information system, possibly. And the limited trim actually adds a blind view monitor. This is probably one of the coolest features I first noticed when I started driving this one. When you turn on the turn signal, whether left or right turn signal, it actually displays a blind view monitor, I guess you could say, directly in the middle of the digital gauge cluster. That is pretty cool because it does let you see very clearly if somebody is in your blind spot. If you were to try to merge lanes on the highway or something like that, you would be able to easily see if somebody was beside you. So it kind of prevents accidents, that little feature there. So gotta love that. But now let's make our way to the exterior on this one. All right, so starting up front, in my personal opinion, the Santa Fe does have a very aggressive looking front end accented by these LED daytime running lights, which actually do come standard on all trim levels. Definitely more of a aggressive appearance with this very narrow lighting setup there. So gotta be a fan of that. Just below that for the SE and SEL trim levels, you will find projector headlights. And this will be jumped up to the current LEDs that you're looking at right now. If you do go with the limited trim level, those LEDs are actually optional on the SEL if you wanted to go that route. However, automatic feature will come standard on every single trim level, meaning when it starts to get dark out, those headlights will turn on automatically for you there. And fog lights, going back a little bit here, fog lights just below will come standard on the SEL and limited trim levels. And you will actually get LED fog lights that you're looking at right now, again, if you go with the limited trim level. So overall, definitely a very nice look to it. Hyundai signature front grille that you find and all of their vehicles now definitely looks good up there. And one more thing I wanted to mention, just beside the headlights here, you do have some air pockets, if you guys could see that, actually helps direct air around these side wheels here, so kind of an aerodynamic cue to get a little more efficient aerodynamics there, but. Now let's make our way to the side a little bit. First thing you are going to notice up top there, you do have some roof rails. See if I can zoom in on that there, so. Roof rails are actually gonna come standard on the SEL and limited trim levels. You will get rear privacy glass for all trim levels and chrome window surrounds once again for all trim levels. And also one dimension, let me go to the back here. There is a shark fin antenna that will also come standard on every single trim level. So that is gonna be found up top, of course. And when it comes to those side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will come heated for the SEL and limited trim levels. And if you go with the limited that we have today here, you will find LED integrated turn signals as well. Continuing the LED theme for the limited trim level. I gotta love that. But zooming out a little bit, let's take a look at the wheel setup here. 17 inch alloy wheels will come standard with the SE and SEL trim levels. However, if you went with the limited that we have today, you are looking at 18 inch alloy wheels. And actually there are going to be 19 inch alloy wheels if you went with the turbocharged engine. And that's regardless whether it be the turbocharged engine with the SEL or the limited. But the wheel setup definitely looks very nice with the Santa Fe that we have today here. But, but then another thing I wanted to mention is all of the satin chrome finishes found on the Santa Fe here. Let me show you guys, let me get a little closer here so you guys can see kind of the satin chrome on the door handle that actually continues down below here. That is satin chrome on the side there as well. 
definitely a nice little accent there. Another little accent to those door handles though is at night, at least you're not gonna be able to see it now, is there are door handle welcome lights. So it's kind of gonna illuminate that door handle. So if you are in a pitched black atmosphere, you will be able to actually see where the door handle is. So you can get into the Santa Fe. But now let's make our way to the back. You will find a rear spoiler with an integrated brake light as you guys can see right there. Rear window wiper can be found just below, zooming out a little bit. LED tail lights, they're actually gonna be found on the limited trim level. That is the only trim that is gonna give you LED tail lights standard. So they definitely have a nice design to them, almost a 3D effect. So definitely like the way they look back there. And just below, let's zoom out a little bit here. Just below, you will find a single exhaust outlet with a chrome tip. So I think you guys know what we have to do next, as we always do, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are round back to actually open that rear hatch there is a button on the key fob you can simply press that if you like but there is a hands-free lift gate if you want with the limited trim level that we have today and that is going to be optional on the sel but but hands-free is definitely a plus if you have your hands full of groceries or whatever that is going to allow that rear lift gate to open up without you actually having to do anything so that's a quite nice feature but once opened up cargo capacity is going to come in at 35.9 cubic feet if you wanted to fold down that second row, that bumps it up to 71.3 cubic feet. And I did want to also mention there is some rear floor storage in that cargo area as well. There is also rear grocery hooks back there. There's a 12 volt power outlet. And actually, there's some buttons as well to fold down that second row seats. And if you do fold down the second row seats, cubic feetness comes in at 71.3. Yes, I know that's not a word. I'm just joking there. But it's definitely always nice to have buttons to actually fold down those rear seats. But making our way to the rear legroom, 40.9 inches is what the rear legroom comes in at for reference. I'm an even six feet tall this is how much space I had back there. Definitely plenty of room for me. So no issues there. If the rear passengers look forward, they will find rear air vents. Also, there's going to be a rear center armrest with cup holders. Also wanted to mention, since we have them today, the rear sunshades that you're currently looking at, they are optional for the Santa Fe. And that is one thing I wish I had in my own Santa Fe, because if you have a newborn, that is definitely going to help protecting them from the sun gleaming into their eyes so your newborn is not squinting when the sun is not the best angle. So rear window sunshades are definitely a plus also wanted to mention the speaker design it kind of has a 3d effect to it so gotta love the speaker design and i'll get more into that later but making your way to the front seats cloth surfaces will come with the se and sel trim levels you will find leather surfaces with the limited however those leather surfaces will be optional on the sel if you wanted to go that route SEL trim level actually is going to add an eight-way power adjustable driver's seat and will give you heated front seats as well up there. Then if you want with the limited, you will find ventilated front seats that will be added as well as thigh extensions. That is something you usually find in luxury vehicles like Mercedes-Benz and BMW, but you do have thigh extensions actually for a little added comfort on the 2020 Hyundai Santa Fe Limited. That is definitely pretty sweet, but looking forward, there is a tilt and telescoping steering wheel. will come leather wrapped for the limited. That leather wrap steering wheel is going to be optional on the sel also if you went with the limited you will find a heated steering wheel for the super cold days in pennsylvania then make our way to the startup let me first start by showing you guys the key here you do have your hyundai logo on the one side and when you flip it over lock unlock and again that button to pop the rear hatch but it is actually all keyless entry with a push button start if you went with the sel or limited trim level at least but since we do have that today, all I am going to do is simply put my phone on the brake here and press that engine start button. Let's open that once started up. Tachometer is all the way on your left. Fuel gauge is going to be on your right and in the center, front and center, there will be a digital display. I love the digital display on the Santa Fe here. So this digital display is going to give you a bunch of different things you can actually look at, including the drive modes. That's the probably the coolest thing because it actually changes the color of the digital display. That sport mode is going to give you a red hue. Smart mode is going to give you blue and actually smart and comfort are going to be the same, but still the sport mode gives you a nice red hue. So that's pretty cool. 
Also, it's going to tell you if you're in drive or park or whatever, but you can actually control what is on that digital display by using the steering wheel mounted controls on the right side there. It's going to give you different things like safety features. You can display a digital speedometer up there if you wanted to, which is what I have it on right now. It's also going to tell you how many miles you have left until you hit empty. And there's going to be a compass up there and plenty of other things as well, actually, that you can scroll through. So quite a very nice digital display up there. Not quite as nice as the full digital display found in the Palisade now, but definitely a fan of what we have here in the Santa Fe. But now let's make our way to overall interior quality. There is dual zone climate control here, wireless phone charger actually just in front of the shifter. That's definitely nice. Home link controls can actually be found on the rear view mirror. That is up to three different garage doors if you have three garage doors. So that's definitely pretty cool. Panoramic sunroof is going to come with the limited. That is what you were looking at right now. So that fully extends into the rear seat. So those rear passengers have a nice view of the sky as well. But I got to be honest, perhaps my favorite part about the interior quality, the interior trim really on the Santa Fe, I've never ever seen this on any other vehicle, even luxury vehicles. A lot of times they'll have black anthracite headliners. That is pretty cool, but black is black. That's kind of boring. It's getting boring in my opinion, but the texture and the color of the headliner in this Santa Fe, it's kind of a mixed mixed color of browns and tans. So it's a little bit of everything, but I love that is not one single flat color. It's a little bit of a mixture. I've never seen this in a vehicle. I was very extremely excited. That was the very first thing I noticed when I got into Santa Fe because it's the little details that mean so much. And again, I've never seen that on any other vehicle I've reviewed to this date. And I've reviewed nearly 400 cars. So that is definitely quite nice. But continuing on up top here, you will find an overhead sunglass holder. There is some LED lighting up there as well. And I do like how the trim kind of continues from the dash into the doors. There is a nice line there and yes I do know that it is plastic but it does look good so very nice finish there just above the passenger side glove box there there's actually a little cubby with a rubberized bottom so those passengers may be able to put maybe a cell phone in there and again since it has a rubberized bottom it's not going to slide around too much as far as the glove box goes it is a decent size it would be kind of cool to see maybe an aluminum trim on the handle to kind of tie in with the aluminum trim around the infinity speakers we'll get into that in a second but just in front of the shifter there, you also will find plenty of hookups for any kind of device, really. You got your 12 volt power outlet, USB, aux port, another USB port for the passenger, I suppose. Again, that wireless phone charger, you have two cup holders just behind that. And there is actually an electronic parking brake that comes with the Santa Fe as well, as well as a auto hold button. So if you are stuck in traffic and you didn't feel like holding your foot on the brake, simply press that auto hold button and you won't have to worry about that anymore. Just behind that, there is a little bit of a storage area just behind the cup holders. And again, that has a rubberized bottom so things don't slide around. And just underneath the armrest, there is a pretty deep display. You got a little tray there as well. So that is definitely nice. So overall, a very nice setup when it comes to the interior of the Santa Fe. But now let's touch on the tech display a little bit. When it comes to Hyundai's tech displays, they're always on point and they are very easy to use. Seven inch color touchscreen display is gonna come with the SE and SEL trim levels. You will get an eight inch color touchscreen display. However, if you want the limited so that is actually what you're looking at right now of course bluetooth and audio streaming will come standard either way as well as android auto and apple carplay even with the base trim level it's definitely nice because android auto and apple carplay that is going to give you free navigation through your smartphone all you need to do is simply hook your phone up to the santa fe via usb cable and then you can have free navigation again you can also actually stream pandora you can like and dislike your pandora songs up on that screen that's always pretty nice you can also check out your climate control up there as well as your radio settings and by the way when it comes to the sound system you will find six speakers with the se and sel trim levels if you want with the limited you will find a 12 speaker infinity sound system so that is actually the one we have today so you guys know what we have to do next as always let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one <laughs> Yes, there is a ton of bass in the Infinity sound system, crystal clear, definitely more than enough of a sound system for the Santa Fe, without a doubt. 
But so the last thing I wanted to mention on that tech display at least is when you do put the Santa Fe in reverse, every single trim level will give you a rear view camera. However, if you went with the limited trim level that we have today, again, you will get a 360 degree view surround view camera. That is gonna give you several different camera angles as well. So you could see it directly behind you, kind of the rear quarter, the left rear corner, also just below you. So you can see that you don't run over maybe a kid's bicycle or something like that. And overall, the 360 degree camera works very well. Also wanted to mention is when I did just put it in reverse, the side view mirrors did tilt down. Once again, so you could see what is beside you. You can make sure maybe you're in between the lines in a parking lot. So that is definitely quite nice as well, but as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so there will be front side and side curtain airbags, also latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Tire pressure monitoring system will also come standard, but for every single trim level, you will also get plenty of advanced safety features, including forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian detection, lane keep assist, driver attention warning, and adaptive cruise control even on the base trim level, that is amazing. SEL trim level is also gonna give you a blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert. And lastly, the limited is going to add that blind view monitor with rain sensing windshield wipers, which we have been using all day today on this lovely weekend here in Pennsylvania. And so, but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Apologize for all the rain sounds in this video. I can't help mother nature, what can I say? But anyways, feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there. If you enjoy car reviews, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell button so you can be notified when the next car review comes out. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you all in the next video. Stay gold.